Hey guys, let's get into an interesting discussion on politics and is politics destroying the Magic the Gathering community? So at least in the US, Donald Trump is our president. And as of the recording of this video, the government has been shut down for some time, which is not generally a good sign. But half the country voted, or very close to half the country voted for Donald, Hence, that's why he's president. I know about the electoral tour college and how that goes, and Hillary won the popular election. But roughly half the population voted for him. The other half voted for Hillary. Now, as we get into Magic the Gathering, Magic the Gathering has not been political uh, ever since I played since beta. No one really cared. And it was more of a us versus them mentality, us being the nerds. Recently, a lot of uh, content creators, they are left-leaning. I think this has to do with their philosophies, uh, possibly their degrees. Uh, many people with uh, liberal arts degrees like history, English, uh, the professor is an English major. I think Wedge is a history major. And a lot of your favorite MTG content creators, we're not talking about engineers, scientists, developers. Uh, we're talking about liberal arts. I've taken some liberal arts classes as well. I went to NYU, so we had to take them. We had to take basically freshman, sophomore year. We had half our classes were liberal arts. The Belle Epoque, uh, French art history I took. Lots of really just history classes. I had to take them because otherwise I wouldn't graduate. As fascinating as they were, they were not anything like my pre-med classes. And they would not be anything compared to my law classes in terms of difficulty and time that you had to spend. Very easy A's, at least at my school. So when I was playing Magic, the politics were never part of Magic. Uh, they were never considered, and you wouldn't have someone on Twitter openly calling out the president and demeaning and belittling the currently standing president. Now, I do understand. I grew up during George Bush Jr. and Obama, and that was a very different. That was a very different situation but you never involve magic about it you want it because uh, magic is the beauty of magic you can go anywhere you can go to san francisco you can go to middle of nowhere san antonio texas and you can play a game of magic with somebody that you don't know their political beliefs you don't know that what their religion is and that was never part of it there are some stores in houston where political beliefs, they kind of regulate against that. And I think the trend is for a lot of times, um, they say that when you're young and passionate and you care, you're a Democrat. When you get older and you have to pay lots of taxes, you become a Republican. That's one of the oldest sayings. And my feeling is a lot of younger people play magic. A lot of content creators may or may not pay taxes. Maybe they don't have health insurance. Maybe they want benefits from the government without paying into the system. And that would make sense. If, even if we look at health insurance, um, the concept of Obamacare is that the wealthier individuals will cover the poorer individuals and they'll all kind of balance out, right? The whole point is that the Obamacare is supposed to provide health care for individuals who could not previously afford health care and the way that it would do so is by charging individuals who could afford health care more money. Uh, and this is, as a small business, I see this too. Um, so our taxes are a lot different from, let's say, an individual. Um, an individual. So when you have a W-2 employee, you pay Social Security, pay medical. Um, we had a previous employee go on unemployment for almost a year. Now... That was an interesting situation that I explained on my other channel, my marketing channel, but nonetheless, you're paying unemployment. Um, the government pays part of it, but you as the company also pay part of it as well. Uh, health insurance, you, you're going to be penalized per employee if you don't offer them health insurance or some type of option, a subsidized option. So 
the responsibilities of a real adult come into play. A lot of MTG content creators, they may not understand this. Um, they may never have had an employee before. They may never have had a job before, like the mana source. When you work a job, you pay taxes. You don't have a choice. It's not optional, right? And when you pay taxes, you're paying into a system. Uh, if you own a home, I pay the uh, school district a massive amount of money, but I don't have kids. But I do that because it benefits society in general, which is A-OK -okay by me because I would rather have educated individuals to talk to you. And so my community is a nice community. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't buy a home in this community. So it does increase the home value and therefore you pay more taxes. So it's this kind of um, cycle, right? But when you talk about magic and politics, this is something that should not go hand in hand. And the reason it does not go hand in hand is it's a children's card game. And people are not subscribed to you to for your political beliefs. People are not subscribed to you. They're subscribed to you mainly to watch magic or play magic. This is especially important when the content creator is all about magic. My content is not always about magic. Sometimes and half the time we talk about cheeseburgers and community colleges and investments. And that's all good and fun. But it comes with a bias and the bias is very obvious to you guys. I hope that you don't think I'm unbiased because that's not what type of channel this is. But when you're streaming and you're trying to grow your audience for the maximal amount of people, you do have to hold back your opinions and you do have to keep your mouth shut because people are turned off. Um, it, the best example I have of this is Many people just want to watch magic. They have a tough day at work. Maybe their work is very political. Maybe they are a Democrat who works for a Republican. Maybe they're a Republican who works for a Democrat. You know, boss is talking about all this crap and you have opinions about it, but you can't say it. So they come home a little aggrieved and they want to watch some Magic the Gathering. But then the person they're streaming is talking about Donald this, Donald that either good or negatively, and that might be a turnoff. So uh, I think the problem, in my opinion, is we don't have a honest discussion between uh, conservative YouTubers and liberal YouTubers, mainly because that there's too many liberal YouTubers. Um, if you go on their Twitter feeds, they will use a now non-gender pronoun. That's like number step one, if you want to identify who is like really on the left. And the reason this is the case, the re reason I believe so many of these people are incredibly left leaning is because they don't have, this is their job. This is their job. Um, if you don't have health insurance and you expect health insurance to be provided to you, then you love Bernie Sanders. If you have college tuition and or expect college tuition to be provided for you, then you love Bernie Sanders because that is his program. If you have certain beliefs that align with benefits, uh, I watch these UK shows now. I know I'll talk about a lot of them, but it really is great. It's great. I can watch the same episodes over and over again because I'm like, oh man, come on. Like, come on, UK. If you believe that you should be handed benefits for doing nothing, then you like the the Bernie Sanders version of it, right? The no student debt, no student tuition, the tax the rich, give more money to the poor, more benefits, more uh, tax refunds for the poor. And there is a divide. And here's the funny part. The funny part is I can tell you from experience the people who mostly buy all your products, the people keeping these stores afloat, they're not the ones who don't have jobs. They have jobs and they spend money and they understand that they can buy a cheaper product. They understand that they can go online as any individual will understand and buy something cheaper from TCG Player, Card Kingdoms, Channel Fiable, Rudy, and Alpha Investments. They can get things cheaper online. It'll be shipped to them two days from now but they choose to support their local game stores. I was talking to my friend who owns a local game store 
where I live in Humble, and these people have vastly abandoned the game because they don't like the politics. They don't like to watch, you know, hey, I want to know the latest deck tech. Let me go on so-and-so's channel. Oh, okay. Hmm, that's a lot of politics that's going on right now. So let me not buy this deck. And that's why I think local game stores are failing. It's not because of the amount of people who are less interested. It's the type of people who are less interested. Um, a lot of my friends uh, in the mobile games, you would call them whales, people who spend a lot of money. And without these people to buy boxes and cases, and you ask why, why do I get discounts? Why do my friends get discounts? It's because they make enough money on the back end that it's fine to do that. It's a volume number to them. If they don't buy X amount of volume from the distributor, they get put in another bracket, another price bracket, and that throws everything off. So when you talk about big buyers and stuff, I used to buy $5,000 of Magic product every new set from my local game store. I don't do that anymore. Uh, A, because I own my own game store now, so why would I do that? It would be like buying from retail to sell retail, right? Now I buy a distributor lever distribution level prices but even before I started my own store I came to realization that like all the really big spenders they're either putting money on a reserve list because that's safe right Wizard of Coast can't touch that or they're quitting the game on Blanc and that's because of the politics now I'm not here to say politics one way or another but it is becoming more and more ingrained in the game where many years ago it was not an issue like even five years ago it was not an issue but today after donald trump and you, you hear a lot of people like the man source tweeting things at him hoping to uh, have a response so he can get lots of likes and become famous and this is where we are as a society um as a society uh, everyone's views on politics are very well known you know tolarian community college's view i know and MTG headquarters view, you know my view, you know Rudy's view for the most part. You can kind of guess what you, you can probably guess what it is. And obviously the Weds, the Weds has many views on this. And you're, you're, you're really turning away, I would say, not, I don't want to say the wealthier individuals, but the bigger spenders. Uh, because they all, they're not always one to one, right? You can have a big spender who's not as wealthy and they just like the game a lot. There's no reason to continue to buy in the volume that I previously bought at because this game is not. You can no longer go to a local game store and really enjoy the game as much as you used to because politics has divided the community. And the best example I have of this is uh, when someone's playing a random magic deck and then they're talking about politics that's pretty interesting right because not all your viewers are going to agree with you not all your viewers are going to want to talk about politics when they play magic when you go to f and m it's just like you're there to relax you're there to have fun you're there to have a good time you're sacrificing your friday some amount of money and your time to play magic because you enjoy it but if the enjoyment is diminished because of politics, because of uh, whatever environment that has changed now, less and less people will go. And in my opinion, that's what happened is that Magic the Gathering has become very political, very left-leaning, uh, Wizards of the Coast, many content creators. And that's because of how much money they make and or their educational background. You cannot change this stuff if... I talk, I went to NYU. It's an incredibly liberal school. And I'm still Facebook friends with all my friends at NYU. And they say some pretty crazy stuff. And I still love them. I really do. And I respect their opinions. But some of it really just is like, oh, wow, that's, uh, I was friends with you like five years ago. <laughs> wow, crazy. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.